Last week, I took a look at how PCI Express bandwidth influenced performance of the 8GB Radeon RX 9060 XT when exceeding the local video memory or VRAM. So the entire idea of that testing was to do just that, exceed the VRAM. And unfortunately for 8GB graphics cards in 2025, that is a relatively easy task to achieve using what would otherwise be highly playable settings evidenced by the 16 gigabyte version. This is an interesting test for a few reasons, most notably of which is the fact that PCIe bandwidth is one of the primary bottlenecks we see when exceeding the VRAM. So increasing the bandwidth here can help mitigate the effects of having to move all the game assets, or at least the ones that spill over the VRAM into the local system memory or RAM. So as I said, pretty interesting stuff. And you know what else is interesting? Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Gigabyte and their latest range of AMD Radeon RX 9060 XT, 9070 and 9070 XT graphics cards, along with their AMD B850 motherboards. The gaming series utilizes Gigabyte's WinForce cooling system, delivering exceptional thermal performance via a large triple fan cooler featuring Hawks fans, composite copper heat pipes, and a copper base plate. The 9070 XT is also available in the Elite range, offering an even larger cooler, dual bar support, and RGB halo effects. All models will pair nicely with one of the many B850 motherboards Gigabyte has on offer, such as the excellent value B850 Eagle Wi-Fi 6E. So for more information, please check the links in the video description. Okay, so just really quickly, for those of you who are unaware, when you run out of VRAM, the game assets are moved into your RAM. So while they would like to be on the memory on the graphics card, which is very close to the GPU, they have to be moved into the system memory or RAM. And actually, if I grab a motherboard here, I can kind of show you quickly. This is a very dusty motherboard. Balin, you need to come and dust this motherboard when I'm done with it, please. I think he told me where to go. Uh, but we'll, I'll explain to you where the memory is going to go. So it has it can't fit in the, the, v, the VRAM here. So it ends up having to go through the PCI Express slot up to the CPU. CPU's memory controller, out to the DIMM slots here, the system memory. So quite a journey there, many potential bottlenecks. And then obviously that's writing the game assets to the memory. And then to read them, it has to go back through the memory controller, back to the PCI Express slot, and then back to the GPU. So a lot of shuffling there, uh, many more pathways, increased latency, all that sort of stuff than just accessing the memory on the graphics card. So that is why you want to avoid all of that. And remember, keep your motherboards nice and clean, D dust them from time to time. The reason why this is often catastrophic for performance is bandwidth. For example, in the case of the 5060 Ti, the VRAM provides a peak bandwidth of 448 gigabytes per second, which is quite a lot. It's certainly a lot when compared to the bandwidth you'll see when accessing the system memory, as the theoretical peak bandwidth for dual channel DDR5 6000 is 96 gigabytes per second, while dual channel DDR4 3600, as another example, is more like 50 gigabytes per second, though the exact figure will depend on a few variables. The point is, 50 to 96 gigabytes per second is a lot less than 448 gigabytes per second, and that's not taking into account the increased latency. These figures also ignore the potential PCIe bottleneck, which could limit bandwidth further depending on the configuration. PCI Express 5.0, for example, offers a bi-directional bandwidth of 128 gigabytes per second. That's when all 16 lanes are available, though that figure is halved to 64 gigabytes for PCIe 4.0 and then 32 gigabytes for PCIe 3.0. Now, the RTX 5060 Ti doesn't support 16 lanes, Rather, it's limited to just eight PCI Express lanes, which means you can halve all of those figures again. And that means PCIe 5.0 offers just 64 gigabytes, 32 gigabytes for PCIe 4.0, and then a measly 16 gigabytes for PCIe 3.0. And this means when exceeding the eight gigabyte VRAM capacity, performance could be drastically better using PCI Express 5.0 when compared to 4.0 and in particular 3.0. And that's what we want to explore in this video. So for this testing, I'll be focusing on upscaled 1440p. So not native 1440p, but also not 1080p. Though it is closer to 1080p than it is 1440p, because again, we are using upscaling. But also as we've demonstrated multiple times in the past, you can very easily break eight gigabyte GPUs at 1080p in modern games using settings that are very playable on a 16 gigabyte model. Furthermore, these eight gigabyte GPUs are not intended or designed for 1080p gaming. That is complete and utter nonsense. 
and it's not how these products have been advertised. AMD, for example, claimed universally that their 9060 XT offers ultra-fast 1440p gaming. NVIDIA also officially demonstrated the performance of the 5060 Ti at 1440p using maximum quality settings, but of course with 4 times frame generation enabled. Point is, neither company is pushing these $300 plus GPUs as 1080p solutions. At this price point, you should be receiving competent 1440p performance, and you do, as long as you purchase the 16GB versions. Anyway, for this testing, we're taking my high-end 9800X 3D test system and using it to test PCIe performance. And that means this video is isolating the PCIe bus and testing that specifically, giving us a clear idea of how much PCIe bandwidth can influence performance when dipping into system memory. This means I'm able to measure the performance of the 8GB 5060 Ti using PCIe 3.0, 4.0, and 5.0, and I'll be comparing that data to the 16GB 5060 Ti using PCIe 3.0. And this data should be extremely useful for those of you without a PCIe 5.0 enabled system, as many CPUs and platforms are still limited to PCIe 4.0 and even 3.0. So let's get into the testing. Starting with Dragon Age the Valguard, we see things go from bad to worse for the 8GB model in this test, but first let's talk about the 16GB card, which I've only tested using PCIe 3.0, because if you don't exceed the VRAM capacity, the PCIe mode has really no impact on performance, very little impact anyway. So for our test, the 16GB card saw an average of 66fps, with a 1% low of 47fps, which is very playable performance. Now under these exact same test conditions, using PCIe 3.0, the 8GB model averaged just 27fps, with a 1% low of 9fps. And that meant the 16GB card was 130% faster when comparing the average frame rate, and 411% faster for the 1% lows. Now increasing the PCIe bandwidth using the 4.0 spec improved the average frame rate by 22%, and the 1% lows by 111%. And then jumping up to the 5.0 spec, we saw a further 12% increase for the average frame rate and a similar improvement to the 1% lows. This means even when using PCIe 5.0, the 8GB model was still unable to provide playable performance, making the 16GB card, which is using PCIe 3.0, a whopping 68% faster when comparing the average frame rate and 119% faster when comparing those 1% lows. This also means while increasing the PCIe bandwidth did help, the 8GB 5060 Ti was so bad in this test to the point where it doesn't really matter which PCIe spec you're using, you're going to have a bad time. And that'll force you to reduce the quality settings for playable performance. Something you don't have to do with the 16GB card. Next up we have F125 using the high preset, though please note the 8GB GPUs perform very poorly in this title when using very high while the 16GB models still deliver highly playable performance. Even so, with just the high preset, we do see some performance decline for the 8GB model, as the 1% lows are around 30% higher for the 16GB card. And that's with the 8GB card using PCIe 4.0 or 5.0. If you drop down to 3.0, the same spec we're using for the 16GB model, the larger capacity card ends up 114% faster for the average frame rate, and 235% faster for the 1% lows. Next up, we have Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, and for this test, the 16GB 5060 Ti was good for an average of 118 FPS, with a 1% low of 96 FPS, so highly playable performance. It's really high refresh rate performance, so really good stuff there, and of course this is achieved using PCIe 3.0, as we're not exceeding the VRAM capacity. The same, however, cannot be said for the 8GB model, and again, I find it baffling that anyone is okay with these two products sharing the exact same name, given how vastly different they are, or at least how vastly different they are in terms of their capabilities. And look, you can downgrade the quality settings to achieve the same performance, though in this particular title you do have to downgrade them to the lowest possible settings, but even when you do that, you can still achieve much better visuals at the same performance level with the 16GB card, and in this particular game, the downgrades are very noticeable. Anyway, I just find it amazing that anyone can defend this. It's pretty mind-blowing stuff, given the 16GB model is not only offering highly playable performance here, but it's also 883% faster when using the same PCIe 3.0 configuration, 
And unfortunately using PCI 4.0 or 5.0 doesn't really help the eight gigabyte model. It's completely broken using these settings. Again, settings that are highly playable on the 16 gigabyte model. So I think you'd be extremely unwise not to take this as a sign of things to come for future gaming. Testing Marvel's Spider-Man 2 using the very high preset with quality upscaling at 1440p. So this isn't native 1440p. And in fact, the render resolution is closer to 1080p than it is 1440p. And here, the 16 gigabyte 5060 Ti was good for an impressive 90 FPS with 1% lows of 56 FPS. So again, highly playable performance. And this meant when using PCI 3.0, the 16 gigabyte model was 592% faster than the 8 gigabyte model, and then 210% faster when limiting the 8 gigabyte card to PCI 4.0, and then 120% faster when using PCI 5.0. So again, due to its eight PCI Express lane limitation, the 8 gigabyte model is pretty much unusable when exceeding the VRAM capacity, which is exactly what we're looking at in this video. Monster Hunter Wilds is another example where it doesn't really matter which PCI Express specification your PC supports. If you want to use the ultra quality preset and of course see all the textures rendered correctly, you will without question require more than eight gigabytes of VRAM. And this applies to those of you gaming even at 1080p. Whereas the 16 gigabyte model was good for an average of 84 FPS under these conditions, the best the eight gigabyte model could muster was 34 FPS with horrific 1% lows of 16 FPS. Next up, we have The Last of Us Part 2, and this game is playable on 8GB graphics cards, though you will experience fairly regular frame time issues and overall lower performance when compared to the 16GB cards. And in this example, the 16GB model averaged 91 FPS, making it 40% faster than the 8GB model under the same conditions, so using PCI 3.0. Moving to PCI 4.0 boosted the 8GB model's performance by 18%, and now the 16GB card is just 18% faster. Then when using PCI Express 5.0, the 8GB model jumps up to 92fps, so the same level of performance seen from the 16GB card. Last up we have Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, and this is another game that plays exceptionally well on the 16GB model, rendering 133fps on average making it 110% faster than the 8GB card when using the same PCI Express 3.0 interface. Now the 8GB card was pretty broken on PCI 3.0 with very poor frame time performance. So moving to PCI 4.0 that mostly fixes this issue, but even so, with an average of 95 FPS, the 16GB model still ended up 37% faster. And finally, using PCI 5.0, the 5060Ti's performance was very good offering similar 1% lows to that of the 16 gigabyte model, though the 16 gigabyte card was still 11% faster when comparing the average frame rate. And of course we know it isn't having to dip into your system memory, sucking up your RAM that could be used for other things. For the most part, the 8 gigabyte 5060 Ti is completely unusable when exceeding the VRAM due to its eight lane configuration, meaning even PCI Express 5.0 can't save it. The 9060 XT on the other hand gets away with quite a bit more using PCI 4.0 and 5.0 thanks to the fact that all 16 lanes are available, providing twice as much bandwidth for a given configuration. So the lesson here is very clear. If you're doing anything other than playing esports titles at 1080p, you'll want to avoid the 8GB models like the Plague, and even then I'd recommend those of you playing esports titles exclusively do the same if only for the resale value. Regardless of the settings used here, if you're interested in playing AAA titles and wish to explore high resolutions in the future and or plan on keeping your graphics card for at least the next two years, under no circumstances will you want to purchase an 8 gigabyte version of either the 9060 XT or 5060 Ti, as doing so will require you to upgrade much sooner than you'd like. And then on top of that, performance and visuals in the meantime will often be less than optimal, forcing you to tweak quality settings in an effort to avoid horrible frame time spikes and just generally poor performance. I know I alluded to this earlier in the video, but I have to come back to it again because I find it really confusing when discussing this whole 8 gigabyte versus 16 gigabyte debacle. Regardless of which side of the fence you're on, I don't understand how anyone can defend a product using the exact same name for two very different configurations, a choice that can result in radically different performance. 
Even if you are of the opinion that eight gigabytes is still fine and that's all you need, which is a stupid opinion, by the way, but you know what they say about opinions. Anyway, I digress. Even if you are of that silly opinion, how do you justify two products with the exact same name delivering radically different performance using settings no less that proved highly playable with the 16 gigabyte model? Take F125, for example. This is really a perfect example of this issue. Using just the higher preset, which again isn't the highest preset in the game, in fact it's the third highest preset, but using this preset the 8GB model is able to deliver playable performance, so that's good. However, the 16GB model was 114% faster when both models were using PCI 3.0 or up to 30% faster when using PCI 4.0 or even 5.0. So how is it okay for the 16GB model to be at least 30% faster? Never before has it been okay for a product to have two configurations, but one be 30% faster under realistic conditions. And this sort of scenario was also seen in Ratchet & Clank. Using PCI 4.0, the 8GB model averaged 96 FPS. So again, good performance overall, but even so, using PCI 3.0, the 16GB model was almost 40% faster than that. And that's an insane performance difference for two products that share the exact same name, and really, these are some of the more favorable examples for the 8GB model. There are much worse examples, which we just saw in our testing. And while we're talking about justifications that I don't understand, I also don't get the justification that the 8GB version is designed for low to medium settings in games like Indiana Jones The Great Circle. How does that make sense? Look, if it had a different product name and was marketed as offering low to medium type performance, then I guess sure. But that's far from the case. In fact, the opposite is true. Both AMD and Nvidia have marketed these products based on the capabilities of the 16 gigabyte models. Anyway, that's enough about why $300 plus US 8 gigabyte GPUs released in 2025 suck. And while I'm sure many of you are sick of hearing me bang on about how bad these products are, until AMD and NVIDIA stop releasing them, I'm afraid you're going to keep hearing from me about how bad they are. And remember, I'm not the one trying to sell the masses 8GB GPUs in 2025. I'm just doing my best to warn as many people as I can. So, until my next 8GB VRAM video, I'm your host Steve. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.